In a world where we have multiple AI agents, how will they work with each other? Ever since AutoGPT and Baby AGI came out this year, autonomous AI agents has been a hot topic. AI agents is almost like AI employees can do very complex tasks autonomously. At high level, AI agents has four big components. One is a profile, which defines who they are and what's their role. And then memory, where it can have both domain knowledge and also the short-term memory so it can remember what happened before and the ability to use large language model to do the planning. So it can break down a big goal into subtasks. And in the end, it has ability to use different tools and APIs to complete the tasks. This framework I'm showing here coming from a recent research paper called a survey on large language model based on autonomous agents, which is a very good paper if you want to dive into the world of agents more. And if you want to learn more technical details, I also made a video before about how can you build an autonomous agents that can do research for you. So I'm very optimistic that in the next six to 12 months, we'll start seeing people and companies hiring AI agents as part of their workforce. You might get a specialized AI agents for different type of tasks, like designers, developers, product management, marketing. And this raised the impression, which is in a world where we have so many different agents, how will those agents work with each other? Because for a complex task and projects, it does require multiple different agents to work together. And there are few projects already explore this multi-agents world. One example is called CAMEL, which represents communicative agents for mind exploration of large-scale language model society. Fundamentally, it provides a playground to simulate conversations between multiple different agents. For example, here, it tries to simulate a conversation between a Python programmer and a stock trader with a goal to build a trading bot in the end. And there are also other projects like Agentverse, which allows you to do those multi-agent simulation where you can simulate the whole classroom with the professor and five or six different students, or the classic prisoner dilemma, where you can simulate the conversation between the policeman and two different prisons and see how the conversation evolves. They even can simulate Pokemon where the character will talk to each other and you can go to a specific character and start chatting with this character. Those are good for social experiments. But the two projects that really caught my eyes are MetaGPT and ChatDev. They are both multi-agent frameworks that allow you to create a team of agents with different specialties and orchestrate them to complete very complex projects. Both of them got really popular on GitHub in a very short period of time. And this really gives us some good insights of how the multi-agents work gonna look like. And this is what I want to show you today. How can you create your own teams of agents and let them work together? So the one I want to dive a bit deeper is ChatDev because they provide a lot of interesting customizations and flexibilities. So there are three key components you can set up in ChatDev, roles, faces, and chat chain. And roles basically means you can define different type of agents from the boss, product managers, CTO, and QA. And then you will define phases, which basically means a specific task and stage. For example, you probably will start from demand analysis, which involves defining the requirements and scope. And in the end, they allow you to station together different phases from the demand analysis, coding, code review, tests, and documentation writing. Each phase will involve different AI agents, and the default team the chat that provides is a software development team. And the result is pretty stunning. It is able to deliver complex software like a classic ping pong game, Flappy Bird, Calculator, 204A game, and even image editor. But the beauty of chat dev is that you can fully customize it to any other team you want. So if you're a content creator like me, you probably want to create a content operation team who can work for you 24 seven from idea generation, research to content writing. And I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step guide of how can you create this content operation team with chat dev. But speaking of content generation by AI, even though it is very powerful, I often have questions like, will Google penalize the AI content that I'm creating on my blogs? And what kind of limitations I should be aware of? That's why I want to introduce you to a research conducted by HubSpot and Jasper, where they explore all those important topics so we can understand what kind of limitations and pitfalls of using AI in our content creation process. And also dive into how top firms in the world are scaling their content generation via AI. So I think you will find this very useful if you are in content operation business. I have put a link to download this free research paper in the description below. So definitely go and check out. And thanks HubSpot for sponsoring this video and provide this free resource. Now back to chat dev. So to set up the chat dev on your computer is pretty simple. First, they clone their GitHub repo. You can do this either through the GitHub desktop app or command line. And once you finish, you can open the project folder in the Visual Studio code and open the terminal. Do this two line of code to set up the Python environment and click enter. 
Once it's finished, we're going to install all the required dependencies. So making sure you are in the project folder. If not, you can do CD chat dev and do this pip install requirement. And once you finish, it should be all good. The next step is set up your OpenAI API key. If you are on Mac, do something like this. Export OpenAI API key with your API key here. But if you are on Windows, then you will do something like this. That's pretty much it. You can already give a task to the web development team by doing Python round.py and give a task name as well as a project folder. For example, I can ask it to build a snake game by doing Python round.py task classic snake game with project name snake and project name will basically be used to create a project folder under warehouse and I will click enter. You can see this already start working uh, with all those conversation here. It will probably take some time. In the terminal, you can actually see the conversation between different agents. So this one agent that is giving comments to the original code delivered by the programmers. And the programmer agent will try to iterate and fix bugs based on those comments. Once it's finished, it will give you a summary about the total cost, which is less than 10 cents. And the apps they developed will be under this folder called Warehouse. You should be able to find this project called Snake. And all we need to do, just navigate to that specific folder, Warehouse, and I'll copy the folder name here. And inside this folder, you can see that we have a few different files. And I will do Python main.py. And here you go. So we got this Snake game. And and it's fully functional as you can see here i can play the game it has actually good visual as well so it is working pretty well inside this folder not only it has implemented the game itself it also have a menu list out the details of how to play this game and this is quite a phenomenon they also provided you a, a simple web app where you can visualize how does this team work together. So you can do this by navigate back to the root folder under the chat dev, and then we can do Python online log app.py. Okay, and then you get this website URL, you can click on and you will get this page. I will click on this chat replay and click on file upload. And I will choose this log file under the snake game folder and click open, then click replay. And this will basically start play out the whole conversation history from the CEO give the brief and then CPO decide on the uh, requirements and there's a little visualization on the left side as well. So it's quite fun to watch. But this is not just it. As I mentioned before, you can actually customize the team of agents to be any other teams and any other standard procedures you have. And the way it works is there's a folder called company config. This is where you can set up the whole team. So if you open that folder, there should be a default folder and you will see three different files. One is a row config where you will define the list of different agents and their roles. At default, they have multiple different roles from CEO, product managers, CTO, and even HR. And then you can open the second file, which is the face config, where you will define different faces. For example, at the beginning, they will define the demand analysis where they will give a very special prompt about what this stage is and what's the goal and scope. And they will also define a assistant role and user role. Because each stage here is actually simulate a conversation between two agents. And in the demand analysis stage is a conversation between the CEO and the PM to come up with the product requirements. And then for the next stage, which is coding, it will be a conversation between the CTO and the actual programmers, where CTO will be giving the programmers a list of instructions about the tasks and goes on and on. So each one of them is basically a specific tasks that need to be happened during this software development process. And in the end, you will have a chat chain config. This is where you will define the actual standard procedure to develop a software. It will firstly do the demand analysis and the max turn step is negative one, which means it only run once. Uh, you can even turn on reflection as well. So the CEO and the counselor can do a bit of reflection after each step. For more complex phases like code review, you can do a compose phase as well, which means this step will be composed of a few sub steps like code review comment and code review modification. And they will repeat this cycle for maximum three times. In the end, the documentation team will try to write a user menu. You will define the list of AI agents need to be involved in this process. So this three files is basically where you can define the team, the tasks, and standard procedure. In their documentation, they actually have a pretty detailed instructions, but I will show you a quick example of how can you create your own AI agent teams. So here I create a new folder. I named meta XYZ, also duplicate the original files from default. So the use case I want is pretty simple. I want to create an AI marketing agency where it still has CEO and counselor to define scope of work and do some reflection of each steps. 
But the main role I will want to customize is marketing directors, whose responsibility is to come up with creative marketing campaign ideas. And then another role, which is marketing specialist, whose job is taking the brief and idea from the marketing director and do the actual content writing. And I remove all the other roles that I don't really need. Once I finish this, I can also customize the faces and I simplify the faces to be only two. One is idea generation, which is basically conversation between the CEO and marketing director to come up with the best marketing campaign ideas. Ideas. The second phase will be content generation, where the marketing director will give the brief to the marketing specialist to do the actual content creating work. There are some caveats about the prompt here. So for the idea generation, the last part is most important, which only brainstorm the campaign idea and do not discuss anything else, because this is actually simulating a conversation between these two persons. If you don't give the scope, the conversation can go anywhere. We also said we should brainstorm and critique on each other's idea after discussing more than 10 ideas, any of us must actively terminate the discussion by picking up the best idea and reply with only one line, which starts with a simple word info followed by our latest content idea without any other words. And what this does is when this special format show up, that means the conversation has ended so that we can move to the next stage. And apart from defining the faces here, you will also need to go to the chat dev and click on the face.py. And for each faces you add here, you will actually need to define class here. But the format is very simple. So you will define the initialization, which you don't need to change much. And then you will define update face environment. And this basically means passing on the global environment to this face because if you remember in the idea generation phase we will actually have a variable called task which is original task that the client give us so in here we will need to define the variable called task where it will do chat environment dot environment that this is the crux of this a face. If the length of conversation is bigger than zero and info label is inside this conversation, then we will set the environment variable ideas to be the information it pass on. And if there's no ideas, then it will return. I have no idea. That's all you need to do. And we will do both ID generation and content generation here with the same format. And once we finish, we will go back to this chat chain config and update the chains where I will basically remove all the other steps that I don't really need and only keep these two steps, idea generation and content generation. And face type will be simple faces because we don't have any sub steps and the recruitment will be this four persons that we defined earlier and the rest you can just keep as same. And that's pretty much it. You can actually give a task to this new team that you just created. And the way you will define that is you will do Python round.py. So you will do dash dash config meta X. XYZ, which is the folder name here. So this means you explicit tell it to use a new configuration folder that you created here. And then the task will be drive more people to subscribe to my newsletter called AI JSON, where I share how to build AI products with a project name called AI JSON newsletter. So I will do this to get start this conversation between different agents. Okay, and now you can see it has finished. So if we go to the warehouse, you will see this new folder here called AI JSON newsletter. Because here I'm doing the content generation, so there's no actual code it will be generated. If I look at the log, there will be a conversation between the marketing director and the CEO where they start brainstorm a few different ideas. And then the CEO pick up the best idea, which is an interactive quiz to test the user's knowledge of AI product development with a call to action to subscribe to a newsletter. I think that's actually a pretty good idea. And once is finished, they move on to the next phase where marketing director is giving a break to the marketing specialist about this is a goal and this idea I came up with. Now please try to generate a social media post. And then the marketing specialist will generate actual social media posts. So this is a very quick example of this AI agent team you can build. I'm super excited to see what kind of use case you start creating in this multi-agent world. So please comment below about the interesting agent use case you're creating. If you do enjoy this video, please consider giving me a subscribe. Thank you and I see you next time.